community since 1970. This is WIS Awareness. A good Sunday morning, and thanks for joining us here on News 10 Awareness. I'm your host, Leland Pender. And in May, we just wrapped up observing Older Americans Month in the United States. And according to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, this year's theme was to uh, encourage older adults in their communities to connect, create, and contribute. Take a look at this graphic here. Connect with friends, family, and services that support participation. Create by engaging in activities that promote learning, health, health and personal enrichment and contribute time, talent and life experience to benefit others. And this morning, I am joined by some uh, ladies here who devote a lot of their time to the health and well-being of our community, including our senior population. So welcome back to educator and gerontologist, Dr. Macy Smith, yeah. as well as um, psychologist, Dr. Markeisha Miller. Thank you both for being here. Thank, Thank you. you for having us. Absolutely. So let's talk about this Older Americans Month, uh, a month to observe everything that older Americans are dealing with, going through things to help enrich their lives. Uh, when you hear about curating and uh, engaging and contributing to their well-being, why is that so important? It's important because we think about the baby boom population. That is the largest population in our country to date. You know, they've cultivated our lands, they've built our country. So an opportunity to celebrate them, not only for the month of May, but always. I often tell people uh, aging is inevitable. People don't want to age. They don't want to get older. But aging is inevitable. But getting old, that's a choice. And so we always want our older adult population to be as engaged in their community as possible with upwards of 43 million Americans uh, that are over the age of 65. We have a large group of people that we have to continue to engage in their community. Sometimes people have referred to our senior population as the for a forgotten community or forgotten Americans. Uh, Markeisha, why is that and how can we kind of reverse that? Because hopefully they know that's not how we feel about them. Absolutely. You know, I think that Dr. Smith put it um, very well with that. So many times when you think about the older generation, um, it's kind of this idea that they kind of fade into the background. And that is the fear of so many of our older individuals is that they are going to be forgotten. And one of the things that we have to remember is that so many individuals of our older population actually suffer with depression. Mm -hmm. um, and depression Depression is such a higher um a higher diagnosis within that population because of the fact that they do lose a lot of enjoyment in life. They often feel forgotten. They often lose that engagement in the community. So I think that's why it's so important that we are promoting and that we are continuing to provide those resources. And as a psychologist, I'm sure you deal with lots of folks, uh, you know, on the age spectrum. Absolutely. You just mentioned depression. What are yes. some of the other issues that you tend to treat your patients with who are a part of the senior population? Well, really, you know, Erickson puts it so well with that stage that so many individuals go through. It's that stagnation stage, right, mm -hmm. where people begin to go through this process of really feeling fulfilled. Have I really lived a good life? Do I really have a sense of purpose? And then also, we've got to think about the memories that so many people begin to lose, that cognition piece becomes mm -hmm. into play. And so that becomes a big piece that I really work hard to treat with the individuals, but also helping the family members who also are watching their loved ones grow older. And that goes into kind of the caregiver's conversation, Absolutely. Macy, and that's really uh, what you deal a lot with. Um, when our senior communicate or our senior population rather is strong and they feel empowered and they're uh, engaging with their community, that really benefits the rest of us. Absolutely, it does. When we think about other countries such as Japan, their seniors and their older adults are revered. They have a longer life expectancy than the U.S. And so when we think about our older adult population, when we look at some of the stats, because we we think about when you get old, you get weak, you get sick. Well, approximately 60% of our older adult population, they do have at least one chronic illness. Approximately 30% have at least two chronic illnesses, which means that they're going to have to really uh, solicit the help of others. Usually the family members, family caregivers are the backbones to our long-term care system. And so when we're treating the, the patient, we absolutely have to treat their family member and their family mm -hmm. caregiver because they're sometimes considered the invisible patient. And so when we can engage engage them and address the root cause of their depression Absolutely. or the root cause and better treat those chronic illnesses, they do have a better quality of life. When they're happier and they're not depressed, they don't go to the doctor as much. They don't overutilize the, the hospital. They can actually definitely have a better quality of life for them, their loved ones, family and friends, and the economy and the community as a whole. Because when you do good and you feel good, you spend a lot more money. That's <laughs> 
true. That's true. <laughs> want to have a good time more often. That's right. Whatever way you right. can. Um, so as you get older, there are sometimes things out of your control. Uh, maybe you're married and your spouse passed away. Uh, perhaps you were married before and you got a divorce or separated. Uh, maybe you have children and maybe they don't communicate as often. Or maybe you never had any kids. Right. How do you work around some of those issues? You know, I think that becomes a part of that grieving spectrum that we also see a lot with our older Americans as well um, because of the fact that so much loss happens during that time. As you indicated, a lot of people reach that retirement age. That's a grieving process. Mm -hmm. um, losing a spouse, that's a grieving process. Um, some actually end up, um, you know, losing more things that they really hold to their sense of independence. Mm -hmm. Even losing your independence as an older adult, that's a grieving process. And so helping them to make those adjustments because as you get older, it's so much about adjusting to the new change in your right. life. Mm -hmm. um, it's a new cycle. And so you're helping the individual adjust, but also sometimes you have to help, as Dr. Smith indicated, the family members, the caregivers adjust as well. So it's all about kind of uh, the approach you choose to take because when you hit a lot of those milestones, retirement, right. grown kids, it's kind of like rediscovering yourself and choosing the life you want to live from it that is. point on. Mm -hmm. I like to call it rewriting the narrative. Mm -hmm. I think that it's this idea that I've got to fill this gap mm -hmm. that is in position right now that so many people experience during that time. And so I think when people are able to do that, they do live a life that mm -hmm. they feels more fulfilling for where they are in that season of their life. So here in our community in Columbia, Richland County, the Midlands, how can folks get connected? What resources are out there that you know of that they can get connected to? The Department on Aging is a great start. Uh, every county or every area has an area agency on aging. Um, you don't have to qualify financially for the support services. Simply reaching the age of 60 to 65, you're, um, you have access to certain support services. So definitely reach out to the Department on Aging for those resources. What about social activities, that kind of thing? So we have the Richland County Recreation yes. Commission, City of Columbia Recreation and Commission. We have church group. A lot of church groups are, are churches have um, senior ministries and they Absolutely. do trips and they do a lot of uh, just activities and, and things that you wouldn't think that an older adult or a senior would do. They're going on vac vacations, you know, they're going to the Bahamas, mm -hmm. so things of that nature. So when you talked about Dr. Miller about just rewriting the narrative, this is almost like the new normal. Absolutely. And when we think about that silent generation, you know, they don't want to make too many changes. So being able to offer them strategies to encourage that. Absolutely. There, Keeps have, them living. It does, and they're having more fun than the rest of us sometimes. <laughs> yes. like, I want to be like you when they're I grow up. Right, right. There you go. <laughs> All right, thanks so much, ladies. Uh, again, May was Older Americans Month. In June, it is Alzheimer's and Brain Awareness Month. Continue our conversation on that when we come back. Because four in five heroin users started with prescription opioids. Because every seven seconds, another painkiller prescription is filled in South Carolina. And because it can take just three days to become dependent. Ask whether you really need opioids for pain. Don't let painkillers be just plain killers. The carpet cleaning industry has been cleaning the same way for the last 50 years. They added detergent or surfactant in water, and then they pull the dirt out. If you don't get all the detergent out, it's going to sit there and begin to collect more dirt. Zero Res uses zero surfactants. We simply use empowered water that grabs the dirt out of the carpet fiber. And that fluid acts as a detergent. But without the chemicals, without the residue, when we clean, there's nothing left behind. Call today and get three rooms clean for $129 and a free haul. Car wreck? Don't know what to do? The Nassipool Law Firm got a million dollar settlement for our client who was hit by a tow truck. That's a lot of money. Call all twos now. Don't scream. Call Akeem. Dial all twos now. I want to be blown away. Cody is blind and autistic. I've been to so many places. America's Got Talent, Tuesday on NBC. America has found its next favorite show. Join these music superstars as they discover their next hit song. That's a house song, because you can buy houses with it. Hey. Songland, new Tuesday on NBC. 
Download the free WIS News app. Live stream every WIS newscast. Stay safe through severe weather with the First Alert Weather Interactive Radar. Search WIS in your app store and download today. Sponsored by 7-Eleven. Congratulations to WIS News 10 Sports Director Rick Henry on being named the 2019 recipient of the South Carolina Black Pages Trailblazer Award. Welcome back this morning. Just ended a great conversation about Older Americans Month and ways seniors can get out in the community and get involved and have some fun. And the city of Columbia has a number of ways to help senior citizens do just that. And joining us now is Sharice Bell with the city of Columbia. Good morning to you. Good morning. Glad, glad to have you. Tell us more about what you offer with the city as far as keeping our seniors engaged. So the city of Columbia has a variety of programs for our senior population. Uh, we do senior trips. We go to Augusta, Charleston, uh, Charlotte. We have a very active community that exercises with us at the Drew Wellness Center. Uh, we also have events and programs and we have a senior empowerment series that we do monthly at our Busby Street Community Center. So there's a lot of activities that we do to keep our uh, senior population engaged. And it's really kind of a, a whole person approach, that physical mm -hmm. stuff, but also that mental stimulation that's so important in those social settings. Mm -hmm. um, when, when, when these uh, classes or events are happening, just what is the, um, what's the mood like? How, how do seniors receive the, uh, the offerings you guys have? Well, what people don't know is our senior population is very active. <laughs> they are not sitting down. They're out. They're very vocal. They're vibrant, mm -hmm. uh, and they participate in a lot of activities. They run a lot of activities. They come with their own events mm -hmm. and programming. Uh, so they're not just like, you know, what you would think, that they're sitting at home, you know, watching TV. They're mm -hmm. out. They're playing tennis. Uh, you know, they're participating in our empowerment series. So it's a lot of things that they do that we collaborate with them on, mm -hmm. um, as well as us offering uh, programming for them. All right. Fantastic. And That's I, important. I want to mention yeah. what Sharice said. It, the fact that they're involved in their own life and in their learning process. When we think about the adult learning principle, adults tend to uh, engage better when they are a part of or in control of their learning process. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that, that's ideal. And so that keeps their brain functioning well and their neurons are firing off because they're doing something that's exciting and stimulating to them. So mm -hmm. I appreciate that, Cherise. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's switch gears here. Uh, June is Alzheimer's and Brain Awareness Month. Mm -hmm. And uh, Macy, that's really the focus of a lot of the work you do is Alzheimer's care uh, for patients as well as caregivers. Um, this month is, of course, very important as well and something that greatly affects many in the senior community. Mm -hmm. According to the ALZ Associ Alzheimer's Association, there are 92,000 people in our state alone who are living with this disease and caregivers uh, triple that number, more than triple that number. Right, right, because they have to have someone to provide that care. And I'm so happy that Dr. Miller is on the, the panel today because all too often, you know, folks get dementia, Alzheimer's disease, frontal temporal dementia, confused with mental health. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's treated a little bit differently. And so being able to have um, empowerment sessions, you know, with the city to be able to really describe what an aging brain looks like and how to get treatment for mental health, because mm -hmm. that could be depression, and how to also get treatment for progressive types of dementia, which would be the symptoms of the actual disease. And so better understanding the difference between the two better helps the, the family provide care. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And there are so many different types of dementia. Like it's uh, more than, almost 100, something like yes, that. Yes, so it's over types. 100. And when we think about, and that's why I like to focus on the education piece of it, because mental health, medications treat mental health conditions. Mm -hmm. For a progressive type of dementia, we, we tend to treat the soul of the person, mm -hmm. and that's through engagement, information, and education. Right. Now, how do, you, how do you keep your brain sharp? I mean, is there, is there something you can do to possibly prevent uh, being diagnosed with dementia or Alzheimer's later in life? Is that preventable? Well, here's the thing that I often like to remind people is that we know that there also is an early onset of mm -hmm. dementia as well. And we know that in speaking about brain awareness, um, dementia can be caused by a brain injury. And so there's so many other factors. And then oftentimes I also talk about, just as we think about hypertension or cancer mm -hmm. that runs within the family, it can also be genetic based. Okay. And mm -hmm. so in knowing that, knowing your family history, that is so mm -hmm. important to get that early testing as well. 
well, um, getting the brain imaging, going and having the blood test. Um, so knowing your family history and starting to get tested, I've had individuals who've been tested as early as in their 30s and 40s because they know that it runs within their family. Mm -hmm. And so that's important to know and understand. But also, there's a strong correlation between anxiety and depression and dementia. Okay. And so it says that people who experience high levels of anxiety or actually deal with depression may be at a greater risk mm -hmm. of developing dementia mm -hmm. early on in their life. Yeah. And when you talk about onset, I, I believe it's, it's 60 or 65 where it's very Typically, prevalent. And yeah. what is on, early onset? Prior to the age of 65. Mm -hmm. okay. And what we know now is that approximately a third of the dementias that we see could possibly be prevented with maintaining a healthy lifestyle and managing those chronic illnesses. And so it's very important that we get that information out to not only the seniors, but also to the family caregivers Absolutely. in those empowerment series that we're doing. And talking about uh, more of these kind of opportunities for education and resources, Macy, you have a couple of uh, seminars or classes coming up again in partnership with the city. Uh, tell us more about that. About a minute and a half left. So on June 19th at mm -hmm. the Buzzer Street Community Center, we will have a senior empowerment series featuring Dr. Macy Smith. And we're going to talk about a variety of topics um, and that will start from 10 a.m. Uh, to 12 p.m. So people can come out. It's free. It's open to the public. Mm -hmm. Anyone in the city and outside the city can come and attend. And we want people to bring their caregivers as well to learn all about dementia, um, some services that are available to them, and a lot more. So there are the details on your screen right there, June 15th and June 19th at St. John Baptist and Busby Street Community Center, free, again, open to the public. Uh, talking about caregivers in this last minute, Alzheimer's and dementia greatly impacts the African-American community more so than others, mm -hmm. but there is a, um, there's not as many uh, caregivers who are getting this information that they need to properly care mm -hmm. for their moms and dads yeah, in and our community. That is exact. African Americans are two times more likely to develop the, the disease and more likely to be treated in the later stages, which mm -hmm. is not as effective. And so talking about the stigma as it relates to the African American community and not wanting to talk about Alzheimer's or dementia because that means the person is losing their mind. Mm -hmm. So when we structure these events in our communities, in our neighborhoods, the, we have a, a, a higher uh, percentage rate of them actually coming out to get the information and that's that's great that's what you that's want idea. To see obviously mm -hmm. yeah all right uh, another quick break here on awareness this morning right back uh, with more on uh, a book that you might want to pick up to help you if you have a loved one with dementia or Alzheimer's we'll be right back so let's grab our brushes and put some finishing touches on our landscape here we can take a little bit of the number nine and dab it on like so Ooh, made a little accident kind of like a George Singh commercial huh it is! If you've been hurt on the highway, call all nines now. If you believe you have been discriminated against, call the South Carolina Human Affairs Commission at 803-737-7800. Talk to us, report it, and we will investigate it. We prevent and eliminate unlawful discrimination. The service we provide is free. Call us at 803-737-7800. Or go to our website at schac.sc.gov. There was a time when social graces were simply more graceful. Ladies exuded charm, and gentlemen embodied verve and dash. There was a time when a room of one's own was more expansive than anyone could dream. There truly was such a time. It was last evening. At Biltmore. Experience Biltmore as an overnight guest, now with two splendid hotels. We are South Carolina asphalt workers, and we love what we do. We used to be where you are. We used to be stuck, not knowing what the future holds. The way we look at it now, we are proud of what we do. There is so much room to grow. We are a family. We're paving the way for our future. Right now, there are jobs available where you live. Get on the road to a better you. It's the bottom of the ninth, tied nine to nine, and number nine is up to bat. All nines? Sounds like a George Sink commercial. It is. Don't strike out after a car wreck. Call George Sink Injury Lawyers at all nines. That's nine, 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 nine. And welcome back this morning. Right now, just joined by Dr. Macy Smith here, who is uh, an author now as well. 
<laughs> She's got a book out that's called A Dementia Caregiver's Guide to Care, Just Ask Dr. Macy. So tell us more about this book, how it came about, and, and what's in it. Okay. It's a, it's a small, interactive guide for mm -hmm. family caregivers who are caring for those who have dementia. I've been in this line of business for over 19 years, and for the past eight years, I've been doing community seminars, and people ask the same questions. And so uh, for the last couple of years, people have been asking, where do we get your book? And I said, what book? Mm -hmm. It's all up here. And so what happens is as they're going through the journey of caregiving, they're faced with so many different obstacles. They don't remember what they learned in the seminar or what mm -hmm. we talked about. And so I published a small guidebook because I wanted caregivers to actually read the book. Mm -hmm. And when we think about their time, it's very limited because they're providing care 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And so they're very uh, specific questions in there that family members tend to ask with my response. Not necessarily a clinical response, but a practical response. I, I really believe in getting straight to the point, you know, offering real world practical information. And so my grandmother, she passed away a couple of years ago from complications from Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. And so I talk about her in the book and use real life scenarios. I've, I've been um, informed by family caregivers and also professionals working in the industry, uh, CNAs and administrators of long-term care communities, is that the information is very palatable, it's transferable, and that information can be used to impact the lives of the person who has dementia and also those caregivers if they put it into practice. So tell me, one or two of the biggest questions you get uh, when people are dealing with these situations. How can I stop mom from acting out or behaving badly? One of the key takeaway there is uh, not to argue with the person who has dementia. A person who has a progressive brain illness, why are you arguing with them? You argue with someone to change their mind, right, Leland? Mm -hmm. Well, their mind is automatically changing due to the illness, and so what you would want to do is really step into their reality and offer support, comfort uh, at that moment in time because they're afraid. We, we know that individuals who have a progressive form of dementia, they've uh, recognized it early on before anybody else recognized it, and so they're fearful and they're afraid because the last thing anybody wants to lose is their mind mm -hmm. and so I teach family members caregivers and also professionals working in the industry how to properly engage with someone who has a, a progressive brain illness and so I actually break down the acronym breathe and it actually gives them step-by-step -step instructions on how to engage with the person who has Alzheimer's or progressive form of dementia vascular frontal temporal dementia with Lewy bodies and it's um, it doesn't happen overnight, but the key word here is ongoing. Eventually, it will impact the lives of those involved. Now, the book itself is uh, very accessible. You mentioned palatable. Yes. It's how many pages? It's 32 pages. 32 pages, not overwhelming. Won't take you weeks no. to get through it. No, it can stick it in their purse. Right. And the key is purse are back pocket. Mm -hmm. The key is to be able to share information with physicians, the doctors as well, because if they're not a geriatrician, then they don't specialize in the care of those who are over the age of 65. And so physicians actually need family caregivers and the seniors to provide information so that way they can offer the best practical care because the mm -hmm. physician only knows what he or she sees while in the office. And so I actually teach family caregivers on how to communicate with the physicians to be able to better treat the symptoms of the disease because the disease can't be treated, but the symptoms possibly could in the early stages. So talk about just the reception and kind of people picking up copies and reading it and the feedback you've been getting from doctors and of course patients and caregivers. Right. It actually has been a little bit overwhelming because I hadn't, I, I knew the information was impactful, but I didn't know it was going to be that impactful. Mm -hmm. Just learned this week that we're trending in the top 100 spots on Amazon. So that's okay. cool because that tells me that the information is getting out there and it's being translated into different sectors. Um, I have people getting multiple copies for their support groups, for their churches, for their long-term care communities. Mm -hmm. So it absolutely means a lot. And we do have some books available uh, in the library, the reading library over at Lisa's Care Connection. I love Lisa's Care Connection. Um, Lisa actually did the back quote for the book. They're a okay. great partner. So if anybody wants to actually go and read the book, they can head over to Lisa's Care Connection on St. Andrews Road and kind of flip through it and get some tips. I was going to ask you how do folks get a copy if they'd like or to access one, head to Lisa's or they can check out your website, bookdrmacy.com. Uh, congratulations. Amazon. And it's on Amazon. Congrats on the thank book and so thank you for joining us. Thank you. All right. We'll be right back here on Awareness. <laughs> With so many refreshing drinks at McDonald's, 
it's always a good time for a drink run. That's right. For a limited time, get any size iced coffee or slushy for just two dollars. WIS TV is looking for organizations that regularly distribute information about employment opportunities to job applicants or have job applicants to refer. If your organization would like to receive notifications of job vacancies at WIS TV, please notify Stephanie Sheely, WIS TV, 1111 Bull Street, Columbia, South Carolina, 29201, or email to Sheely at WISTV.com. WIS TV is an equal opportunity employer and encourages minorities to apply. Bojangles, Cajun Filet Biscuit for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Hurry in today and get two Cajun Filet Biscuits for just $5. Nothing compares to our signature Cajun Spiced Chicken Breast Filet on a fresh buttery biscuit. Breakfast so good, we serve it all day. Get the best chicken biscuit. The one, the only Cajun Filet Biscuit. For a limited time, get two for just $5. Bojangles, it's bow time. Hey, Diminish, you're on 10 on 10. Hey, what's going on? How long have you worked here? Almost two years. Favorite part of your job? School visits. Favorite hobby? I love to ride my bike. Favorite meal? Pasta. Favorite movie? Jurassic Park. How many states have you been to? Way too many to count. How do you like your coffee? I like lattes instead. Hidden talent? I can play the saxophone and the oboe. What would you do if you weren't on TV? I'd probably teach. Favorite thing about working at WIS? Definitely the viewers. Here's your first alert forecast. We're tracking rain and a lot of it across the With so many refreshing drinks at McDonald's, it's always a good time for a drink run. That's right. For a limited time, get any size iced coffee or slushy for just $2. Welcome back. And lastly today, a big thank you to Dr. Macy Smith, Dr. Markeisha Miller, and Sharice Bell from the City of Columbia. You can always learn more about what options and resources are out there for our senior population by visiting the City of Columbia's website or Dr. Smith's website. Uh, bookdrmacy.com and also if you want to learn more about her book head to that website as well or you can check it out on Amazon thank you for watching this morning that's our show here on WIS Awareness we'll see you next Sunday